purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to connect and stream Xbox One to Windows 10. The advantage of streaming to Windows 10 is that you can then capture uh, the complete audio and video from the Xbox within OBS or whatever capture you're using. Right now I have OBS configured. You can see I have a webcam upper right here. We have an audio input capture disabled for that video capture device, which is the desktop video capture device, which is the Logitech HD 1080p that I have and the display capture, which is the desktop. Uh, my mic audio is the Blue Yeti. I have two filters set on this. Uh, one is noise suppression at negative 30 and a noise gate, negative 32, negative 26, uh, with an attack time of 25, 200, and 150. Noise gate is important because it removes a lot of noise that you would get otherwise from devices uh, that are running components, hard drive, uh, key clicks, although you're going to hear my controller and key clicks. I have the Razer Black Widow keyboard. That's uh, quite clicky. And the, uh, the computer fans you would hear. All right, so we're we're capturing right now, so you can see what we're connecting. I have a cable modem where we have a gigabit LAN, and I want to be able to stream the Xbox. So the first thing I need to do is connect the Xbox to the network and power it up. So we're recording on my GoPro at the same time here, so we will. Move over to the Xbox One where I'm going to connect up the power cable. And I also have a headset, which I could plug a headset directly into the Blue Yeti headphone jack right there. So it's a eighth inch jack. I can use a set of Turtle Beaches that I have with it that uh, Joe gave to me, Joe Jenkins. He runs a YouTube channel also, but I use the Astro A50s for the headset. All right, on my, um, in my setup, I have the Blue Yeti microphone and uh, the Astro headset allows me to avoid the um, feedback back into the stream. Okay, so we have our controller. We we'll want to synchronize our controller to the Xbox. Plug in power first. And we plug in power. Power connector. We have HDMI. We'll go to our monitor. HDMI is connected. With the Up USB and the optical the optical port goes in one way and it snaps in. See now we have red lights because the USB port is powered, even though that the Xbox is not on. So we power on the Xbox. Press this button here to power on the Xbox. And now we need to synchronize our remote. We have the lead controller. Turn on. It's blinking. So we need to synchronize. To synchronize, hold this button. Button on the side here. We press. And we'll synchronize, and when it's synchronized, you can see we have a solid light. Close up shot of the synchronized button. So this is the A50 headset. Right now, it is synchronized. If something were pressing this in, or I held this button for too long, I'm not going to be able to communicate with the headset. This, this will not communicate with the Xbox at all. That point, hunting for twice. Um, synchronization was broken between. So to synchronize, 
see what this is flashing with. Hold this button in. Fill this flash. And then they will synchronize. And you can see that there's now they're both ready. So we have our Elite Controller tied wirelessly, this Xbox. Now I'm going to set my monitor's input here to HDMI so we can see the... I have it plugged in through one port in the back. Troubleshooting 101 right here. We have the HDMI cable plugged into the port. The input. This would be the input from another device like a Blu-ray player or a cable box. Here, which is the output to the early set. And we'll see what happens when we switch our monitor to HMI. There we go. Now we have our monitor set. So we have, you can see now that we have the ability to control the Xbox One from this monitor if we have any problems connecting. So I can check. Let's do the first thing. Maybe we will go to. We we already have connection. Okay, so we know we're connected to the network. Let's just take a look at settings anyway. And I'm going to run a network test and test network connection. Okay, so it says it's good. Test multiplayer connection. This goes through a little bit more in-depth checking. And it's going to say pass or fail. Okay, there are no problems. That's good. That's important. So you can see our NAT type is open. All services are available. And we're IPv4 and 6. And we are wired. And now you will need to know the IP address, your internal IP address. To find that out, go back to network settings. Detailed network, no. Advanced settings, and it shows you your IP address right there. This information right here, the IP address, that is the important piece that we'll need. We have to remember that it's a 196 internal IP address. Okay, so we'll back out. I'm just hitting the B button to back out all the way. So at this point, I'm not going to load anything. I'm going to switch my monitor back to... So now we've learned how to connect out the Xbox. We connected it to the network. To the network. It's connected to my switch. My switch is connected to my router. Uh, through that, we have a connection out to the Internet. The Xbox One controller, the Elite controller I have, is connected wirelessly to the Xbox One. So it's synchronized. It is synchronized. Alright, you will need to go to the Microsoft Store, Store button, and from here you would search Xbox, and you would install this app. So this app is already installed on my computer. I can launch it. All right, to connect to your Xbox, there's a button down the bottom left here, which is this connection. So from within this app, you would need to log in. Right? So to log in. Right, I can sign out, I can log in. So you log in with your with your information. You can see there's my YouTube channel, my bio. So the connection, click on a connection icon. And you can see more. Let's forget content. So now I can add a device. And the device should show up automatically, but if it doesn't, I can enter it in manually, 10.0.0.196. So this is the Xbox One, but this is also 
Now you can see it shows it. If you don't see it here, you have another issue inside your network. You could have a connectivity problem if you're if you do not have good bandwidth in or out. That'll cause you a problem. So now I can test stream. Hit the test stream button. Start test. And can't do anything with this to so that the app is verified. So it's going to go through now and it's scanning, sending, I'm sure it's sending tons of packets up to the console and to make sure there's proper bandwidth up and down. So if you didn't notice, this is my setup here. This is the, this is the Blue Yeti microphone. And I have the Rode, uh, the Rode uh, mount with the shock mount on this mic. And we're connected to USB uh, to the computer. That's the way it connects. And you saw the setup for the configuration within the OBS settings. Okay, so what I do while we're waiting for this to test, after every every night of playing, I will connect up the charger cord that came with it, which is plugged into a uh, a wall board USB charger. Okay. See, I plugged that in, so that's charging the the battery, which is good for six hours. So now you see we have, uh, we're good on all fronts, low, medium, high, very high. So we get good bandwidth. All right, so now we can stream. So we hit this button here, stream. Uh, we can also turn off the console. And I found that turning on the console really doesn't work. Tried it, it's not working. I got to figure out why it's not working. Let's just hit the stream button. Now it's going to give us a warning message, an error message. All right, there are new controllers. So this is where we have to physically connect our Elite controller uh, to. So we got our. This is plugged into the computer. This USB cable. This is the Elite charging cord that came with it. I'm going to plug that in to the back of the controller. The other thing I'm going to do is connect up the Astro headset here. Do this. So to connect that up, plugs right in. So this is the Astro A50 connector. Plugs directly in here. Here we go. So now we're plugged in. So now, now that we're plugged in, I can hit the continue button. If this is the first time you plugged in your controller, there would be a controller update that would occur. Uh, I did this some time ago without recording. So that is uh, that feature is not showing up. So I continue. And now at this point, I have control of... See, so here's, here's my mouse. I'm not even touching it. This is the controller that I'm using. Now I can go home, and at this point we can launch a game. I want to show you how I get things working. So we're recording right now through uh, the the Yeti microphone and our playback devices. So to playback devices, and now because if I don't do this, you're going to get feedback. So at this point, I want to on my um, my headset. We have our headset on, and I got the controller in front of me. And I want to make the headphones, which is the Yeti headphones. I want to make this the default. Now, if I had a Eighth inch jack, set of headphones, powered, 
keyboard or passive plugged into uh, the Yeti microphone output, I would set this as default. So I'm going to set this one as the default device. So now any sounds coming from the Xbox or the PC are going to be redirected to my headphones and there should be no output at all coming from the speakers. And what that means is that it'll be perfect recording from OBS from the Xbox without any feedback. And the party who we're talking to will not have any feedback either. Now, the nice thing about streaming with Xbox is I don't need to worry about the microphone on the Astros. I can keep that microphone up. See, I got the, I have this all the way up. I put it down, you know, I don't know if that changes anything. Uh, but, you know, we can see that the microphone is still being picked up. Of course, you can hear me. So if I do anything here, does that change anything? I don't see anything changing in the game. And I'm not in a party either, so that, that may be part of the issue. So now we keep uh, minimal. We keep our desktop minimal when we're streaming. Now at this point, I can start a, start a game. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Add a comment and let me know if you'd like to see more videos along these lines. And uh, please subscribe. Thank you.